Auto manufacturers have been working for decades to find ways to improve their build quality while improving their build cost, heck, even maybe shave some weight. One such suggestion was larger castings. Sandy Monroe from Monroe & Associates, the teardown titan himself, has been advocating it for a very long time, but nobody would listen. Well, now that it's actually in use, Tesla and others are picking it up, there's a whole lot to consider. And so we've got Sandy Monroe here to tell us exactly why that's good. We will also be discussing things he saw at his tours of Giga Texas that surprised him, which manufacturers are on the wrong and right paths. And of course, we have to have a question about Jim Farley. Let's get into all that right now. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. Special thanks to Joa for sponsoring this video. Joa offers a variety of high quality accessories for your Tesla, like sunshades, phone mounts, and floor mounts. Every one of the Joa accessories I got when I first became a Tesla owner are still in my car, in use to this very day. Whether it's for your Model Y or Cybertruck or anything in between, they got you covered. For a limited time, you can get 10% off your purchase from Joa with coupon code ASA10. And I'll get a small commission too, which helps out the channel, so thanks. So you've been suggesting larger castings for manufacturers for years. When I yeah. came into your studio, your your workshop, your uh, place lab. there, your lab, yeah. uh, I got to see the, the big uh, one that's, that you have on display. Uh, now that you're seeing it, do you think we're going to, is, does this result in cheaper manufacturing for companies mm, or is it yeah. just easier? What, what, what is the biggest benefit? Well, um, number one, it's about the same weight as what you'd have if you had a bunch of welded, uh, parts. However, when you're looking at a number, uh, of, of pieces that you have to try and weld together and whatnot, uh, it, it drags the cost up significantly. And it also, as you add more parts, you add more potential for, um, yeah, you add more potential for poor quality. The more vari variables you have, the more likelihood you're gonna have poor quality. So with a casting, I have one lump that comes out. Um, it's rock solid, stable. It doesn't need to go through a secondary heat treat or whatever, it comes out T6 right away. Um, I can machine it, which will give me dead nuts accuracy when I'm trying to put those panels up or anything. I mean, everything is perfect and uh, as far as assembly is concerned. So that adds to your efficiency on the online side, on the actual build of the product. There's no banging it with a hammer or twisting it with a two by four. People think I make that up, but trust me, I've been there. And uh, that's, that's what you do. Um, things do happen. So we think that um, uh, there's a lot of things that, that could be done uh, that, uh, or are done with the castings that save money later on in the build of the product. And I can tell you for sure, it just rides like a rock. It's rock solid. There's no, no, no nothing. There's no, uh, no hum or chirp or n there's nothing. It's, it's a perfect build. Um, and, and then you've got the uh, the floor space advantage. So if you take out literally hundreds of stamping dies and stamping presses, and you put in two or three of these big giant um, uh, Hydra presses, it's 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 dramatic. You you lose forty percent of the floor space goes away. It's gone, and yeah. uh, floor space is expensive. So. That's uh, that's a big deal. Body a whole lot of yeah welding machines are gone. The yeah exactly. the line is shorter. Yeah, exactly. Everything's shorter. Everything's smaller. That's why you farm out most of these little stampings. You farm those out so somebody can um, make them at their plant, and then you ship them someplace. So your list logistics costs go down. And again, it's hard to really put a, a number on these because nobody. Everybody just says, oh, it's a hidden factory. Oh, we don't know. It's a hidden factory. Oh, we don't know. It's a hidden. That's what they do all the time. Well, I, I don't, as a engineer that grinds me, I don't like that. I, I, like to, I like to know how much everything costs. But for those costs that I could uh, attribute, it looks like about 100 bucks on uh, one end and about um, 50 bucks on the other. And that's for the um, 
and that's for the Model Y. The, the, the Cybertruck, we haven't quite, we have no, there's nothing we can compare it to. So it'll be what it is and we can't do anything about it. But I can tell you, it makes a big, big difference on the factory floor, huge difference and a huge difference so, from a quality standpoint. So it, uh, do you think, uh, and, and there's other manufacturers who are starting to use these castings now. Yeah. Are these going to get lighter than their uh, stamped counterparts over time as as they dial in the actual tolerances for what the what it can handle? Yeah, engineers, myself included, are a little bit conservative when it comes to, hey, let's should we make it engineered or should we um, kind of give it a rule of thumb and and make it a little fatter? And so I believe that as time goes by you'll see more um, what we call lightning holes uh, because really and truly when you have the webbing like those um, angled brackets and whatnot that are cast in, the rest of the skin, you don't need it all. You might have some there, but, but there should be big holes all over the place. And then if you want to go crazy, you can always uh, bore holes in and, um, and, or you know, water cut them in. These things are stuff. These are the things you do later on after you've had a chance to see where you've seen failures and things like that. So, yeah, I think that eventually we'll be looking at smaller. But let me rephrase that. The castings will get bigger, but the the walls will get thinner and you'll get be getting lightning holes or or water jet holes to uh, just get rid of uh, redundant weight. So you've had a chance to tour the factory in Texas twice, yeah. at least that I know of. Yeah. Uh, do, what did you see there that surprised you? Surprised me um, about everything. I mean, um, the big number, the big thing for me is they have a forty-three second cycle time, um, and um, nobody else does that. Everybody else is at about sixty seconds, something like that. That gives them a huge advantage as far as. Um, being able to push product out the door. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen that, I mean, other manufacturing engineers like myself would say, hey, that's brilliant. You know, like a, the um, uh, a pickup points and um, and the way they're they're forming some of their parts, the, the basically the stainless steel stuff. I mean, <laughs> I was pretty much blown away by that sort of thing. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of creativity at uh, at Tesla that you don't see in other companies because most of the time you're never given the opportunity to take a risk, uh, at least not the kind of risks that Tesla takes. Uh, they do empower their employees to rise to their highest, craziest level. Yeah. So if you can say, because I know I'm, I imagine you have NDAs with a variety of companies, are there any EVs that you would say are companies that are definitely on the right path or definitely on the wrong path? Well, I made plenty of comments about uh, Volkswagen being, oh my God, these guys are going to go out of business. But throwing a billion dollars at, uh, at Rivian, that's going to save their asses. And that's a fact. Um, they'll be able to pick up now on what Rivian did and how they do it. And and Rivian has a smaller vehicle that uh, could be cost reduced and um, and sold in Europe could be manufactured in Europe as well. And this is a very fast way of getting into the market. So uh, Volkswagen has gone from not a chance to, you know what, that was a smart move and um, hopefully they'll be able to survive. Other companies uh, that are on that risky list are be Toyota and uh, General Motors uh, in many cases, not all cases. I mean, the, the riskiest was Volkswagen then you got Toyota, and you know way down the list is uh, General Motors. Uh, on the other side, um, so I, everybody says I, you know, I might have stock at Ford. My my, I have a Ford penchant, but uh, but at the end of the day, I I still recommend the um, uh, the Lightning as being if for a work truck. I, I love my my Cyber Truck. And uh, when we had uh, the Rivian, I thought that was a great, uh, you know, family kind of pickup truck. Uh, but uh, not so much for everybody else. So the Lightning and the Rivian, 
uh, and the and the cyber truck basically they're going to dominate the marketplace for electrification we start looking at sedans and um and uh, things like that i mean kia hyundai again ford with the mustang i'm just hoping that ford puts out more um uh, electric vehicles and does it in a hurry uh, you heard the little impassioned speech that uh that uh Jim. Um, Jim Farley, yeah, uh, gave. Um, that's the kind of stuff I want to hear more of, but I want to see it too. Uh, but uh, but Polestar, I mean, there's so many that I can point at now. And then when the Chinese start coming in, watch out, mama. That that's going to be. It's going to be. They're going to be hard to beat. They're going to be very very hard to beat. That's all. Uh, very exciting. I know Ford's got their skunk works. They're trying to get a bunch of first principles vehicles built and out the door. Uh, so last question. This is the big one. Jim Farley. He's a pretty cool guy, right? Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, he seems very likable. I hope to get to meet him uh, maybe next year. Uh, I think he's got his uh, priorities right on EVs. Uh, would you say that's a fair assessment? Yeah, I think he's I think he's the the big proponent at Ford. Um, but he's got an uphill battle. I mean, he has to deal with Wall Street. Uh, it's tough. I don't envy that job. In fact, I wouldn't no. take his job for nothing. I mean, for a million bucks a day, I, I would. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd probably come to, come to work with like a baseball bat. And it, it would be it would be a tough I, I, I wouldn't. Um, I couldn't do that job. I got. I don't have the right. Uh, the right stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It. It's a gentle walk to try and sort out the diplomacy of yeah. well, working in a corporate environment. And yeah, that's why I wasn't. Uh, that's why I'm not there. <laughs> you don't strike <laughs> me as can't uh, as, can't work for uh, that. Well, I, I mean, I could probably. I, I might, Yeah. I might be able to work for Tesla, maybe. But I doubt very much if I be able to work for any of the other bigger automotive guys. I haven't known you to to tolerate much BS uh, and Stuff. yeah. And corporate uh, America feels like a lot of that. So, uh, Sandy, I thank you so much for sharing your precious precious time. I look forward to seeing you again at events. And yeah, uh, yeah. You, and are you going uh, to be going to? Um, are you going to be going to Vancouver? I will not be at that one. I'm. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. I did see you there last year. I see you all over the place. I'm going to be in uh, Monterey. Uh, when this comes out, I'll already be in Monterey. I'm going to see all the Chinese cars that are being sold in Mexico, and then I'm going mm. to be uh, doing some site visits. Uh, I'm not saying which ones just yet. And then I'll be at the X takeover in San Luis Obispo at the end of the month. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm so. missing that one. I they gave they gave me the date a little bit too late. I, mm. Well. So anyway, I have to say hi to John for me. Yeah. I will absolutely do that. Thank you so okay. much. And All I right. appreciate your time. All righty. We'll see you then.